Y toma la palabra el doctor Eberto. Buenas tardes, uh, mesdames y messieurs. I'm going to speak in English. It's not my mother tongue. My mother tongue is in French, but uh, for the benefit of the translation, I'm going to speak in English uh, today with you. Uh, first, uh, let me uh, thank uh, the organizers for inviting me to join us, to join you, and also to escape from the weather in Canada. It's actually minus 20, so uh, I'm very pleased to be in your warm hand. <laughs> so let me, let me say a bit of a context. The province of Quebec is um, uh, approximately a little higher than 8 million inhabitants. 17% uh, are actually over uh, 65 years of age, but it's going to be a very, very uh, fasting aging of the population. Uh, we're going to be uh, at 25% in uh, 2030 and uh, uh, nearly 30% uh, in uh, 2040 because of a, a very big uh, baby boom in, in the 50s. There are approximately 30% of older people that are uh, requiring some kind of long-term care. Uh, some, and the majority, uh, are living at home. 3% uh, are living in nursing homes, and uh, also 3% are living in residential uh, uh, living. The Quebec healthcare system is uh, tax-funded, beverage-type uh, kind of uh, healthcare system like in Scandinavia and UK. Uh, it's so publicly funded, it's a, a universal coverage. Universal mean universal in the, in the 60s. So universal means that all medical and hospital services are covered. Home care, it's a gray area, and that's a problem. There is in Quebec an integration, a full integration of social and health services since the beginning of the, uh, of the system in the 70s. We are the only one province to have integrated social and health care, but despite of that, we are facing problems of integration. The integration of health and social uh, services are at the minister level, at the regional level, and also in the local organization level. Uh, so there is no direct payment by clients. We are using a, a small credit card, that's the health insurance card, and that's the, the physicians and the hospitals that are uh, asking for reimbursement. Uh, so the, the, the state is uh, the only funder, is the uh, manager of the system, and the uh, uh, main provider of the system. So why integration is an issue? It's an issue because there are a lot of silos or some people say uh, pigeonholes or uh, organ pipes uh, it, within the system and uh, around the system. Uh, Lutz uh, divided uh, integration into three steps, the liaison, which is the first step of the integration, and at the other hand, the full integration system. And there are many models of full integration systems developed in the States, for example, around the PACE system, the PACE organization, or the social HMO. And in Canada, the SIPA and CHOICE uh, models have been developed. All these models are on the same, uh, the same schema as you see on that slide. There is a single organization that is responsible for a given population of older people. Usually they use a, a, a case manager and they organize the services around a day center or around an home, home care services and they are contracting with other organization around for some of the, of the home care services, hospital care or rehabilitation care. This kind of model is not appropriate in a universal healthcare system like we have in Canada because it's difficult to manage a single organization working in parallel with the usual health and social services system. So we develop a, a new model, which is the, the, the second kind of model in the Lutz uh, uh, taxonomy, which is a coordinated model where all the organization whether it's public, private, non-for-profit, voluntary, all organizations agree to come under an umbrella governance. 
And as you see on that slide, there are dotted lines around the organization. It means that every organization agree to lose some of their autonomy to the benefit of the umbrella mechanism. So there is a, a triage system, there is a single entry point, and a case manager who is uh, uh, using the resources for, from all the organization, whether it, it is publicly funded or public, uh, publicly uh, governed or uh, private or not-for-profit organization. So th it's that kind of model that we developed and we validated within the PRISMA project. So what is this model? It's not a rigid model. It's made of six ingredients, so you can cook your, your model according uh, to uh, your, your area, your given area, uh, the actors in the area, the providers in the area. So the, the six ingredients are first a governance structure or mechanism. It's more a mechanism than a structure. Second, a single entry point. Third, a case management system. Fourth, an individualized service plan. Fifth, a unique assessment tool and a management tool also. And a sixth, an information system, a computerized clinical chart. There is a seventh ingredient, which is the financing, an integration of the financing, but we, we didn't include that seventh ingredient at the beginning because given our uh, financement system, it, it, would be, it would have been very difficult to do that, but I will come back later on the importance of integrating the funding also. So let's go to the, the six ingredients. The first one is the governance mechanism. We should put around the same table the, uh, the director and the, the CEO of all the organization in, uh, involved into providing services to the frail holders. So it means the, the director of the hospital, of uh, uh, the home care organization, of the uh, voluntary organizations, the, the non-for-profit organizations, coming around the same table and, and shifting their mind from a client-oriented approach to a population-oriented approach. That means that they are serving actually clients who, they, who, who, who should not be served by this organization, and they are not deserving some people that should be their clients. So the idea is to get the right service at the right people at the right time by the right organization. So it's really a mind shift, a paradigm shift that is very important to happen within uh, that table. There is also another kind of table with all the directors of uh, of the programs and services of those organizations coming to, to, to sort out the, the, the processes. And on the clinical ground, there is a case management with uh, the other professional working in a multidisciplinary uh, to uh, serve uh, the clients. So this first ingredients is very important and it takes time for those people to come uh, with uh, uh, an integrated mind to uh, the services that should be developed in the area. The second one is to have a one point of entry. Actually, or uh, before uh, the integrated model, people were receiving uh, services at the door they were knocking on. So they should knock at one door and get the uh, appropriate services they need. It means a, a triage mechanism to identify people who are at risk of functional decline. We use a Prisma 7, which is a, a very simple seven item questionnaire that could be filled out by people waiting uh, for their doctor appointment or having uh, a flu shot or getting to the emergency room. So that kind of uh, uh, quick instrument is uh, very interesting to identify people who should benefit from the, uh, the integrated service delivery system. And it's linked to the health line, which is a, a line where a nurse can answer your, your question uh, seven days a week and 24 hours a day. And uh, we collect uh, basic information on people with that step. This, the third ingredient is the case manager. And the case manager is doing the basic assessment. It's, it's not a manager, it's a clinician. It's a, it's a nurse or a social worker on, or another health professional with a special training who is responsible for assessing people, 
for uh, uh, getting the essential information about the people and uh, to uh, plan the services, to do the individualized service plan, and to, to get the appropriate services for, from all the organization. It's a kind of service broker. Uh, and uh, given the, the governance mechanism, this case manager is legitimate to operate wherever the patient is. It's a kind of a blue helmet who is legitimate to, to, to work at the hospital, to work in home care services, to work in voluntary agency, and so on and so forth, for the benefit of the patient. It's a, it's a patient advocate, and it's also uh, the person who is responsible for reassessing the, uh, the, the patient. So it's, it's really an intensive case management system like uh, many authors propose in the literature. Uh, the caseload, for example, is 45 per uh, case manager. It's distributed by neighborhoods, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's also, it can, the case manager can provide direct services for example, as a nurse or as a social worker in their own area of expertise. The fourth element is an individualized service plan. So it's a, it's a plan uh, le led by the uh, case manager with the other health professional involved in the care. And uh, it should be approved, formally approved by the patient or the family. And uh, it's important to empower the patient with the, what is his plan, his service plan. And uh, uh, it should be periodically reassessed uh, in order to see if the objective or the action are still appropriate for the condition of the patient. The fourth element is to get a unique assessment tool. It's, it's very important to get a, a, a unique language in this kind of Tower of Babel situation uh, of uh, different services. So uh, we use the uh, Functional Autonomy Measurement System, the SMAF, which is a, 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 disability, a disability and handicap scale uh, with a case mix classification based on this, this disability scale. And so the SMAF is uh, a 35 item covering the activities of daily living, mobility, communication, mental function, domestic activities and also social functioning and it's uh, a scale on a five point scale uh, covering all those uh, uh, items and uh, it looks like this uh, on the left hand side you have the uh, disability rating on a five point scale each item is labeled uh, very pricelessly to, Im to increase the, the reliability of the scale and you should assess if the uh, people have the, the actual resources to, to overcome the disability and you can uh, uh, have an handicap, an handicap scale. Uh, so on the billions and billions of different uh, possibilities of uh, disability profiles with uh, 35 items on a five-point scale, you can imagine the number of possibilities, you can end it up with 14 ISO SMAF profile. 14 profiles that are different each from each other and uh, are homogeneous as the, the resources that should be uh, put in place to, uh, to uh, serve uh, the patient. So uh, we developed that by cluster analysis. We validate that and we ended up with that kind of tree. Uh, the first three ISOSMAF profile uh, people are green. Green means autonomous. On activities of daily living, mobility, communication, and mental functioning, and they have disabilities only on domestic tasks. It's the, uh, the, the profile two, for example, is an example of uh, old men who cannot uh, take care for themselves uh, by uh, cooking and by uh, 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 taking care of the, of the house. Uh, they are sexually or culturally disabled, and they're going to become handicapped if they lose their resources, uh, their, their spouse. Uh, who is providing the compensation of their uh, disability. And you ended up at the end with uh, profiles where people are severely uh, disabled on all uh, the activities and the, 
the, uh, pro uh, the ISOs with the intermediate profiles divide into uh, two branches. Uh, on the left-hand side, it's people that are firstly uh, disabled on the motor uh, activity, so uh, mental uh, functions are preserved. It's typically uh, people with rheumatoid arthritis or, or Parkinson's disease. And on the right-hand side, there are uh, uh, four profiles uh, with uh, disabilities in the mental functions, so people with Alzheimer's disease, for example. So each of those profiles are associated with a number of hours of care, uh, either uh, for supporting or personal care or for nursing professional care. And you can imagine that we can associate a cost of care uh, with each of those 14 profiles. So it's interesting to use that kind of management uh, system not only to uh, prescribe the services or define the admission criteria, for example, the admission criteria in nursing home is to have a, a profile 10 and over, but also for uh, monitoring the patient, for uh, getting the appropriate uh, services to the patient and for financing issues. And you can compare with those kind of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, management system, you can compare different services. You have uh, the distribution of the profiles from profile one in gray, one, two, three in gray, to uh, profile uh, 14 in red in home care at the top uh, line. So you see that 30% of people receiving home care have profile one, two, or three. And in nursing home, the last line where most of the people are severely disabled or uh, suffering from mental disabilities. The sixth ingredient is to get an, a computerized clinical chart in order for all the organizations and the providers to communicate each other, to have access to uh, the assessment, uh, to have access to what's been done in their uh, own organization. And uh, so there are a lot of uh, security and privacy uh, issue, but it's quite important to facilitate the communication. So in summary, you have a single entry point with a screening, a triage. People are referred to the case manager who is responsible for assessing the need, and the case manager is using the services from the social economy agencies that are providing help in domestic tasks, from the voluntary organization, they are responsible for Meals on Wheels, for example, from uh, the long-term care uh, organization or uh, the hospital, or the home care organization, which are the CLSC in our healthcare system. And the case manager is working closely with the family physician, who is a, a kind of medical case manager in line with the uh, medical services and the specialist. So it's a good idea, but does it work? So we, uh, 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 sort of, we, we run a, a project, an experimental project, with an implementation of that system in one area, the Eastern Township area. And uh, we focused on three specific uh, area to measure the impact and measure the implementation. It was one urban area, the city of Sherbrooke, and two rural area, the city of Quetzcook and the city of Lac Megantic, who uh, became uh, famous uh, last year by the railroad accident that you're here uh, for sure. Uh, and we provide evaluation on the implementation process by three uh, case studies and on the impact, on the population impact by selecting a random sample of people over 75 at risk of functional decline and we followed up uh, those people for four years, whatever they get in touch with the integrated system or not. So the conclusion for the implementation is it can work, uh, it's feasible, and uh, it's uh, uh, the implementation uh, rate, when they reach over 70%, you got an impact on the population. So the threshold for getting an impact is 70%. And the degree of implementation, as we measure it by some scales, were, was good to very good. About the impact, there was significant effect, uh, statistically significant, not only on functional decline prevalence, so 7% less in the 
experimental areas because we had also three controls areas in a similar uh, uh, and similar region in Quebec, and but also on the incidence of new functional decline, new cases of functional decline, 14%. It was unexpected in our hypothesis. It seems that we can identify earlier people at functional uh, decline risk and uh, work on that risk. There was a significant decline of uh, the unmet needs, a uh, significant improvement of satisfaction and empowerment in the experimental area. There was less visit to the emergency room, less hospitalization. There was no effect on the other variables, and we run also an economic evaluation who, in, who uh, demonstrated that including the cost of implementation in the experimental area, there was no difference between the, the experimental and the control area. That means that the efficacy was better at the same cost. It means that an, an increase in efficiency of the system. So after, uh, we had a government at that time that uh, uh, used those data to recommend generalization of uh, the system uh, so uh, it means that uh, we're going to see when the rubber hits the road, what's, what's going to happen. Uh, so it was in the government action plan in 2005. Uh, there was, unfortunately, unfortunately, a concurrent reform that merged the hospital, the nursing home, and the CLSC, the organization responsible for home care, into one single structure called the Health and Social Services Centers. You can say, oh, that's good. There's going to be a structural integration. But uh, the data we have is that the, that structural integration slowed down the functional integration or the operational integration. It seems that the structural integration do not mean that we improve the uh, operational integration. In those new organizations, they continue to work in silos or in pigeonholes without having concerns with the other provider outside, the uh, voluntary organization or the uh, social economy agencies organization that are providing also services. So they were really looking inside at developing the structure of the, the new structure of the, the organization, the new strategic plan of the organization. So it took four to five years before they were aware of other providers and aware that they should uh, put in place mechanism inside the organization to improve the functional integration. And, and now, these days, on the 1st of April, there's going to be a new reform about structure. They're going to merge not only hospital, CLSC, nursing home, but also youth center, rehabilitation center, public health center. So, and they're going to they're gonna merge that uh, in one organization in a single region. So the local organizations uh, are going to be are going to disappear. And we know that the local organizations are key for uh, a functional integration, uh, a good functional integration. So you see on that slide the uh, implementation rate, and we last year uh, crossed the threshold of 70% of uh, implementation. So I will skip that one. Uh, there's been uh, an evaluation of the implementation. Uh, the, we, we did not uh, make enough money to train the case manager. You know, beginning, becoming a, a case manager is a, a very important shift in your professional task. It means that the nurse or the social worker is no longer a nurse or a social worker. It has to, to become a case manager. So it means that he, 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 has, he or she has to, to get some new knowledge, new attitude, new abilities uh, to become a case manager. And I think it was... Uh, uh, we, we did not invest enough in training the case manager. And uh, also, uh, uh, there was delay 
uh, in the availability of the electronic record for all over the province, and so it was a, a, major, a major problem. I will skip that one also. And finally, the financing issue is a key issue. As said, uh, one of the case managers, we better coordinate the use of the basket of services, but the, the basket is leaky. Uh, there is not enough fund to get the appropriate services for people. There was a study in Quebec uh, that showed that uh, the public funding is responsible only for 15% of the uh, services needed by older people at home. Uh, because of the coverage of, a, of a, our health insurance that was designed in the 60s and uh, that covered medical services and hospital services. But the home care services is a, is a, is a gray area. So uh, we need to uh, focus on the financing. Uh, there is a lot of financing, especially for home care, and that's why uh, the uh, Canadian beverage type model, uh, I think, is, is limited uh, because uh, we cannot have specific funded uh, to a specific a given level of disability. The funded is going to the hospital, to the public organization, and those organizations are deciding for the patient what's going to be accessible, what's going to be covered. We have to change that and to give to the people the power to decide by themselves what uh, they want to have as services when a functional decline process is, uh, is coming. So there is problem also in that kind of, of system to transfer funding to private, non-for-profit or voluntary organization in order to uh, provide some of the services. And because we put together home care organization, nursing home, and hospital within a single organization and a single budget, guess what? The budget is going to the hospital. And the home care organization is the parent pauvre, the poor, the poor parent of uh, the uh, organization. So the financing, the funding, is the seventh ingredient of the PRISMA model, we should change the financing, associate the funding with uh, the uh, people, and create an hybrid model with a long-term care public insurance. That's uh, what I've tried to do when I was Minister of Health, uh, launching a Livre Blanc on uh, an autonomy insurance system. Uh, we were a minority government, so it took a month uh, to have the uh, commission uh, consulting the people, but we ended up with uh, a bill uh, creating an autonomy long-term uh, insurance. Unfortunately, we were defeated before the bill was passed. Um, I think it's, uh, it's a dead idea for the moment, but uh, uh, I think the idea itself is not dead, uh, and I think it's uh, uh, mandatory for our country to move that way, to include the funding, to get the people with disability the power to decide what's good for them, what's appropriate, where they want to live, where, how they want to receive the services. So in conclusion, uh, PRISMA is, uh, I think, a good illustration of uh, uh, research transfer to uh, uh, policy, uh, to public policy. Uh, the implementation of such system need uh, more time than expected, as you've been able to see, it, it took uh, more than 10 years to be implemented. Uh, it needs an adequate monitoring, you know, monitoring the implementation was a key factor for uh, getting uh, the uh, regions and the organization to uh, to adhere to uh, this uh, new way of delivering uh, services. Uh, it uh, needs adequate funding, especially for, for the case management training, uh, and uh, it uh, needs that no other major initiatives is uh, going on at the same time with the competition with the, the uh, values of uh, the uh, two uh, new initiatives. Integration need uh, an appropriate funding system, a long-term care uh, public insurance system, and 
I'm going to hand with uh, it's, all, it's all about politics. So thank you very much for inviting me, and I hope uh, this uh, presentation will be useful for you. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci.